Hello, my name is Valery Kravchuk. I am a principal support engineer working for MariaDB Corporation, and today I'm going to speak about DPF Trace as one of the tools that uh, MariaDB DBAs and developers may, may use to trace uh, different functions and different parts of MariaDB server code as well as any other software. So, a few words about me for those who, for some reason, don't know me yet. I'm in this business for 16 years. I provided support for MySQL in MySQL AB, Sun, and Oracle. Then I joined Percona to get more uh, positive real-life experience in problem solving. Then eventually, in 2016, I joined MariaDB Corporation to work on most complex and interesting problems so far. Uh, since I left Oracle, uh, I am a public person. I have a blog devoted to MySQL and MariaDB. Uh, initially, it was devoted mostly to MySQL bugs, hence the name MySQL Entomologist, but recently it also. Uh, a lot about different solutions to all kinds of problems I see and document these solutions for myself in my everyday job. Uh, among other things, I work about uh, I write, sorry, about different Linux uh, and other operating system tools I use to do my job. BPF Trace is one of them. I have a Facebook page. Initially, again, it was mostly devoted to MySQL bugs marketing. Now it's more like a personal space, which is reasonable. Uh, I still write and speak about bugs. Uh, I write about them at my Twitter account that is named MySQL bugs. There I have a, a useful tag, bug of the day. And once in a while, several times per week, I write about some MySQL bugs. <laughs> this my public activity in MySQL ecosystem was eventually noted. So in 2019, I was nominated and got the award as MySQL Community Contributor of the Year. That's the last year so far. When we had a chance to get this award, uh, as a public person, I write and speak about MySQL and MariaDB in public, mostly at FOSDEM conferences, uh, Percona Live conferences historically, and uh, all kinds of MariaDB events. And I'm happy about that. Uh, from my past, what you should know is that I worked uh, for a long time as a trainer for DBAs, not MySQL DBAs. And from that time, I have a habit uh, of creating such a primitive and simple presentations that uh, may be used as a reference. So whenever you see some underlined uh, word on my uh, slides that are already public and will be available to you no matter what conference committee and MariaDB first, first organizers do or maybe forget to do. So my slides are always available. And when on my slides you see something underlined, it's a link. So you can click on it to end up uh, somewhere uh, in this case, in my blog, for example. Uh, to summarize my experience of these 16 years, uh, I spent this time solving all kinds of complex problems, and I tried to share my experience. And basically, at times, I had to drink. Uh, I met and worked with many people as customers and colleagues. So as I put it, similar to Tyrion Lannister from, from the famous book and series, I drink and I know things. Cheers. What you should also understand is that while I'm uh, associated and work for MariaDB Corporation, I always speak for myself. I act as an independent consultant. I am my own private business owner. So uh, I try to do my best to uh, tell true things I believe in or I know. But uh, whatever I say, suggest, approaches, tools, comments, whatever are mine and shouldn't be considered as coming from my current or any previous employees or partners. So the topic today is uh, BPF trace, but is it the only way or the only tool that may be used to get uh, tracing and profiling information for software like MariaDB? MariaDB? No, not at all. Initially, uh, developers uh, 
try to debug problems from the repeatable test cases. Uh, and when they do, they try to use uh, specially built debug binaries uh, where you know what? Debug printouts is embedded based on debug package, so they can be enabled dynamically. And in old part of MySQL and still inherited MariaDB code, you can find out that every enter and exit from the function is instrumented with uh, special macros that in debug binaries may be uh, enabled and so print whatever information was considered important at the moment. For DBAs, there are also other kinds of tools. Uh, normally in production, nobody uses debug binaries because they are too slow. So with time, a lot of tools were added, famous show commands, show status, show global status, show engine in ODB status, show whatever storage engine in ODB uh, status, and many other things. So SQL level commands. Uh, eventually, thanks to contribution from elsewhere, ReadyB got uh, not just a slow query log. What you usually care about uh, as a DBA are slow queries coming from applications. And then you find out why they are slow. But that's the initial task. So they can be uh, written to a separate log. And extended slow query log allows you to get a lot of insights on how the slow statement was executed, how many rows were read, what kinds of operations were done, uh, had it used temporary tables, and many similar things. Starting from MySQL 5.0, uh, the information schema was introduced like a metadata about the the server internal workings, at least this is supposed to be the place based on SQL standard. So there are different tables in the information schema, both uh, those that can be considered a part of the data dictionary and those related to performance, those explaining what kind of operations, how many, when were executed uh, at the server. So one of the tools to get insights of internal workings is surely for example, InnoDB data dictionary tables exposed and even uh, such internals of InnoDB as the content of the buffer pool are, uh, is exposed uh, over, uh, via the separate tables in the information schema with types. Additionally, due to contributions by the users who try to use MySQL and friends in production, uh, we've got another uh, important uh, tools. For example, the first uh, first uh, really well accepted and popular community contribution by Jeremy Cole is command called show profiles that allow to trace the time spent on different stages of specific query execution. So it's kind of query profile that can be written uh, down somewhere and then restored uh, queried with SQL statement or uh, with just show command. So you can see where the time was spent. Uh, when we speak not about just time, but uh, what does the application load mean for the database server? There was a user start edition, as far as I remember, initially by Google. And it was made popular by Percona and is available in MariaDB as well. So user start, again, uh, when you enable it, you get uh, three or so tables in the information schema additionally. Information schema is extendable with plugins, and that's great. So uh, those present uh, activities of specific client, activities related to specific tables, how many rows were read or written to the table, activities related to specific index. This way, you can find out if any table or index was used at all. It's also tracing. Uh, eventually, uh, it was decided that we need a, a low impact, uh, but very detailed uh, tracing that can be used in production. And starting from MySQL 5.5, the performance schema was added, and it was supposed to be the ultimate solution for DBAs. Uh, for getting the insights of server working. But it depends on instrumenting the server code. And for such a complex code base as MySQL and MariaDB with uh, third-party storage engines and similar things, you cannot expect uh, proper instrumentation. And it's still work in progress, even though a huge wave was already past. And if we speak about MySQL 8 or 5.7, it's largely instrumented by performance schema. Uh, it's less true uh, for MariaDB. Uh, MariaDB 10.5 finally is more or less similar in this regard to MySQL 5.7. Uh, and historically, the developers of MariaDB tend to use other debug and tracing facilities, and it's still the case. So performance schema was like not the first level citizen in this ecosystem. It's even disabled by default in MariaDB, and that matters because while it can be configured dynamically, it can should be enabled at start uh, time. One of the reasons, other than personal preferences of, of many 
core developers of MariaDB, why performance schema is not enabled by default is performance impact that uh, in extreme cases in my scale as well can be as high as dozens of percents of overhead. It depends on what instruments you enable or how you trace, what do you query. And there are many other problems related to performance schema, even though the idea is great. It's based on uh, collecting information in the memory buffers, and it's one of the best practices for, for low-impact tracing. So what I am advocating historically for probably for almost five years already at different conferences. These days, we mostly use uh, MySQL and MariaDB on Linux. And Linux as an operating system is getting a lot of uh, its own tracing and profiling tools that were initially created by Linux kernel developers uh, to solve performance problems of Linux kernel itself. Uh, and we can just use them. So I suggest to use different tools from this uh, kind that are all available starting from Linux kernels 2.6 at least, so for more than a decade. It started with a prod file system, proc, sorry, uh, where a lot of internal workings and state of processes is presented. Then very soon uh, it came as an F-trace interface uh, and very soon again Profiling was added to this uh, yet another profiling framework that we know and use via perf. And with time, starting from kernels 3 and kernels 4, and uh, eventually a very elaborated set of tools uh, is now available in Linux kernel 5, current ones. This set of tools is called eBPF tools, extended uh, Berkeley packet filters. It's coming originally from BSD systems. And packet filters means that this set of tools was initially created for uh, uh, flexible, uh, to provide flexible way, way to do filtering, uh, network filtering, packet packages, processing over network. So high performance and highly flexible ways to process information on the fly with minimal impact. So there was a set of tools with different Linux version and of them, today I'm going to speak about BPF trace. Uh, so uh, other tools were already covered by uh, several of my talks at different conferences. So it's just about time to move on to BPF trace and I will try to explain why. There is yet another way to study the way uh, what happens in uh, MariaDB server uh, that is also concentrated on things that matter uh, for the application for final users, and it's based on capturing the traffic, TCP dump analysis, for example. If you can capture every packet on the wire, you can see that it belongs to MariaDB protocol, and you can see that there is a query, and you can find out how fast you can get a reply, and many more details. So this is also one of the approaches. I'm not advocating it right now, but it's still valuable. So uh, basically, uh, while this session is about tracing, that is uh, understanding which function calls basically happened, and profiling, that is understanding how much time was spent per function call or uh, how resources were used per specific function call in general. Time is just CPU time is just one of the resources. Other resources include memory, for example. So uh, this session is about tracing and profiling uh, such a complex software as MariaDB Server on modern Linux versions. Specifically, I tested most of the recent examples, and I will show you how it works on Ubuntu. It's not the latest and greatest, but uh, recent enough. Uh, 20.04. Uh, basically, any Linux uh, distribution recent enough to include kernels 5 will perfectly work for the, for the tool and the approach. So uh, unlike in many other similar presentations from me and my colleagues and other people in the community, I am concentrating specifically on BPF trace tool. That is like a, a convenient utility for DBAs and convenient utility for uh, one-liner small programs, small quick scripts to prove the point or find out something that is simple enough and Unix way enough, uh, similar enough to many other tools to be easily used. So I will discuss some problems uh, that can be resolved by BPF trace, some problems to use BPF trace, and solutions to some of these problems. The uh, main point why I'm even speaking about BPF trace is uh, that it uh, allows you to do tracing and profiling in production with minimal impact. And we try to estimate what does it mean, minimal. So debug binary is a huge impact. And they are hardly practical. Tracing with tools like uh, Valgrind, for example, uh, and 
related tools is also hardly practical. Uh, we need something faster. I do not speak about performance schema because of my current focus and uh, work for MariaDB for five years. So here developers would like to get the repeatable uh, test cases as everywhere and uh, performance problems or other problems presented with code insights, basically with the stack traces. So this is what you cannot get so far from the performance schema and it's not enabled by default and it's widely discussed elsewhere. Uh, Perf and BCC tools uh, were discussed in my other talks and uh, blog posts, so that's why I do not speak about them now. Uh, they're also a bit harder to use and may, um, may be less flexible, even more performant and more suitable. So uh, I suggest to use modern Linux operating system tools while troubleshooting MariaDB server, uh, both for developers and for uh, production DBAs and for support engineers, and I'm trying to do it myself. Of all these tools, I would like to uh, concentrate on BPF trace, uh, which is uh, put into the uh, context here in this picture uh, slide that I borrowed from Brandon Gregg's uh, blog that I suggest you to read. Here it is. You can see a link. You can follow it. Uh, so uh, here we have different layers of the uh, Linux operating system and applications working on it. Different performance uh, sources of performance information, different part, parts that can be traced to monitor. And here you see a set of tools that cover the full stack from the application code to device drivers and everything. And BPF trace is one of these tools. Uh, it's not the first one, it's one of the newest, and there are other tools, Perf, Ftrace, and other uh, profilers historically, but PPFTrace is the latest and to a large extent is the greatest. I will try to show you why. Basically, if we speak about the applications, we are not going to uh, trace Linux kernel most of the time, or even though some uh, System calls are useful to trace, and a trace utility, for example, is uh, a popular tool among DBAs uh, used to understand what's going on, why something hangs, what happens. Uh, but basically, uh, when we speak about and try to deal with such a complex code base as MariaDB server, we need insights into uh, the uh, server code. So we need a way to uh, trace and profile functions in this code. That's why from all possible sources of information about uh, performance or about uh, the events. We are interested in so-called user probes. Uh, all kinds of uh, traceable uh, sources of information can be split in two dimensions, those in the kernel and those in the application, it's one dimension, and those that can be added dynamically and like appears automatically when you need them, and those that require uh, changes in the code. These are called manual annotations. So performance schema basically is based on manual annotations. You have to put something into the source code to be able to then uh, cure it uh, and access it through performance scheme. Uh, here uh, in this presentation, I will be mostly concentrated on user probes uh, for the application, in this case, MariaDB server. Over the time, support for all different sources of uh, information were added to, to the uh, tools based on uh, BPF. So some historical remarks. Uh, so basically, eBPF or extended BPF these days is it's usually again called BPF. is a tiny language for LLVM virtual machine that can be uh, uh, that uh, runs inside the kernel context and can execute some safe code. Initially, eBPF uh, was uh, invented as a more flexible way to do packet filtering, uh, stateful uh, firewalls and similar, similar things. Uh, basically, TCP dump is implemented that way. But as soon as we have such a, a safe way to uh, execute uh, the code that originates from the end user, it's not a part of the kernel itself, but in the kernel context, with access to different facilities, kernel already provides for other tools, uh, like, for example, performance events uh, that were created for profiler, for perf profiler. So as long as we have that, uh, it's very tempting to use these for other means. So how comes this is safe? Uh, first of all, it's a virtual machine. It's not a real code executing in kernel. It's not like you have to create a kernel module, compile it, and put it into kernel context. Then, to make sure the code is safe, when you first translate it into the byte code for this virtual machine, this byte code comes 
via the verifier. Verifier uh, tries to check uh, basically that there are no dead loops, that the code will always complete, that it's safe, it does not access any memory that it shouldn't. So uh, then uh, if uh, the code generated passes the verify, it's executed by the virtual machine, and virtual machine can access different uh, facilities inside the kernel. As a result, it can uh, create, uh, collect the information same way as performance schema does for MySQL and MariaDB in uh, the in-memory ring buffers. In this case, it's they are called maps. Uh, basically, these are associative arrays in general. So some, some array that can be indexed by arbitrary uh, information by strings in general. So uh, these maps are named, and you can access them by index. And there is an efficient way to map specific index to the specific value. So ideally, this information is collected, uh, summarized in such maps, and then it's output uh, in asynchronous manner to the user land, to the user program, when needed or at the end of the execution in the form of statistics. You can surely also get uh, information from other sources, put it synchronously or asynchronously uh, back to the user land. So the idea is that while processing happens in, it happens in kernel, there are no context switches in between user land and kernel. So it's super efficient. And as you have a virtual machine, you can do a lot of things here to summarize the information you need and return only information you need to the user land. So uh, the amount of information sent back and forth uh, exchanged via file system is limited compared to other ways. So that's why it can be efficient if used properly. So historically, uh, eBPF uh, was added to Linux kernels 4. Uh, it's still uh, available in uh, distributions like Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7, for example, and CentOS 7, due to the way they, they named their kernels 3, but they backport features. So with time uh, till the uh, version 4.9, uh, all the features I mentioned before were already implemented. It was a process. So for some older Ubuntu, for example, my previous favorite was 16.04. Uh, it stopped somewhere here, so it was not a great uh, target for many uh, eBPF-based tools because it was lacking some of the uh, features. Uh, but basically, on any modern Linux kernel, uh, you can use eBPF programs, uh, and they are safe, easy to work with. And uh, while uh, basically uh, the virtual machine can uh, execute the code generated from many high-level languages like C, Python, or whatever, uh, in most cases, you do not need to, to program, actually, to code anything. Uh, you use uh, some exist pre-existing problems. There is a lot of dozens of so-called BCC. BCC stands for uh, BPF Compiler Collection. So BCC front-ends that uh, already implements basic tracing, for example, uh, a lot of insights into the kernel, you should study them. But uh, each specific front-end, it's not... Uh, flexible enough to cover everything and eventually user would like to code something uh, by himself so uh, for users who do not want to go to as low level as coding in c or python or whatever bpf trace was invented as a high level but still complete feature complete language similar to awk that can be easily used to to create quick and mostly efficient tools and check various ideas so what is BPF Trace? So BPF Trace is a front-end, programmable front-end, based on programming language that resembles AWK. Uh, the program is expressed as, as a sequence set of pattern action pairs, or more generally, filter pattern action. So uh, you uh, set conditions uh, when the pattern uh, or pattern sets the conditions uh, for the action to be executed, and if the emit action is executed, and you move on to the next command. So it's like one-way path. Uh, it's feature complete and flexible. Uh, so BPF trace at the same time allows you to access all kinds of events, all event sources that I mentioned previously, kernel trace points, user probes, static uh, instrumentation in application code. Uh, you can actually trace and do something at enter of an every function, it's user probe. At return from function, it's URAT probe. Uh, there are special probes for that are executed once at the beginning and at the end. There is access to performance counters and everything. So BPF trace probe types covers full stack 
uh, and allows you basically to do everything. So, how to start with BPF trace? It's easy. You have to install it. Uh, it's easy, and at the same time, it's not easy because uh, BPF trace, while it's provided as packages in modern uh, Linux systems, uh, usually these packages are somewhat outdated. Uh, we can try to do something like this. Package minus L. So you can see that version that comes uh, with uh, my Ubuntu is somewhat older, or in case of BPF trace, so it's uh, much older than what I have right now. So it's very different, while uh, 0 0.9.1 uh, is already good enough for most cases, but it's still outdated comparing to what you can get uh, by building from source. So you need to get that BPF trace. And as soon as you get it and check that it basically works somehow, I built it from source as old as September 16, uh, so just like a week ago, less than a week ago. First thing to do is uh, call it with help option. Help shows you how to use the tool basically. Uh, it accepts some options and either executes the BPF trace program with minus E option execute or get it from the standard input or get it from the file name. BPF trace is the binary, so you can actually use normal Linux uh, practice of running the text file via this binary as usual. So there are many options, and I uh, suggest you to study them. We can see how it works in reality. So here we have the options. I documented just some of them. Uh, uh, those that are surely used uh, often and uh, that will be useful for you. So main option is help itself, uh, execute a program. It's quoted, it's put in single uh, quotes uh, because it uses uh, meta symbols for shell, so you should care not to interpret them. So what else? Uh, in case of uh, program that program that try to tries to trace uh, kernel internals um, or maybe some application code with quite complex structures, you may need includes. And there is a way that you can really use include directive similar to C programming language, but you need to know where to find your include. So there is minus I option. Interesting option is called list. So you can list uh, pre-existing probes that uh, matches some uh, template. Interesting stuff here is the number of probes for the Linux kernel itself. Just count them. Sorry, you have to run BPF traces root of your sudo. That's also a problem for somebody. But that's true for all Linux profiling tools in general. So as you can see, uh, the kernel itself uh, provides like uh, 70,000 uh, different probes and trace points that you can use in your programs. You can uh, try to run uh, your programs while debugging, while working with them uh, in a more verbose mode with minus V or minus info option. So I will skip some of these. You have to study them. Uh, there are also environment variables uh, that uh, matter. I've highlighted three of them. Uh, the most important one probably uh, is this one. There is a limit on number of probes you can create with BPF trace. It's large enough. But for the purposes of this talk, I already hit this limit uh, while working on some of the examples. So if you will set the goal of tracing too many different functions, you will have to set the environment variable to a higher value. And there is a cost, surely. More memory used and maybe slower execution, so you should be careful. Another thing is that those maps or associative arrays by default are also limited in BPF trace to just four kilobytes of different keys. Uh, if you will be collecting different stack traces of MariaDB, for example, you may need more. And yet another one is uh, less of a problem, but uh, by default now, modern version of BPF trace understand mangled 
not only mangled, sorry, but demangled C++ symbolic names for function methods, uh, function calls from classes. So this is enabled by default, but if you do not want that, you can disable it. There are some more, but I never uh, had a need uh, by now to change them. These three I played with, so I highlighted them. Now, how the program look like? So as I told you, it's pairs, probe, action, or uh, triples uh, in a more general case. So there is a probe. You set some action for the probe. You can set it conditionally. Uh, so if uh, this probe is hit and if this condition filter is true, then action is executed. Program consists of such sequences, one or more of them. You need at least one, otherwise there is no problem. Uh, so a probe, how you define probes? There are keywords and different kinds of probes that you may use. Here you have highlights uh, that uh, will refer you to the reference guide. So basically my point is that if you are going to use BPF trace, you have to read the reference guide. So uh, same as in, in AWK text processing language, there are begin and end probes. Begin is executed once before everything else and is executed at the end. Now, there are types of probes for the uh, sources of information for the traceable events that were already presented. There are kernel probes, kernel return probes, user probes, user return probe, kernel trace point, user static defined trace uh, points. Uh, there are probes for uh, profiling, sampling with some frequency or uh, executing uh, at some time interval. There is access to software and hardware performance counters. Uh, this one, watch point, you can set watch point and conditional watch points if you need to the memory areas by address. I had not used it, it's highlighted for me. Basically try it, but it's similar to watch point in, in debuggers as well. So you can do something when uh, some uh, memory address is read, written or executed. It's cool. So these are basic types of probes. There are more. So I'm not going to uh, explain you the entire reference and it's not practical and it, one would need time and experiments to understand that. But the language is basic. So other language elements uh, that resemble uh, AWK to me, uh, action blocks in curly brackets, uh, filtering, uh, it's just a condition that can be very elaborated. There are comments, normal uh, two slashes or slash uh, star, star slash multi-line comments if you need, if you create larger programs. You can uh, use structures, uh, so you can define structures, you can get uh, use structures from includes you have, similar to C, but when you refer to structure members, uh, you refer to them via this uh, operator, not via dot like in C, but like you dereference them. There are conditional statements, there are incremental operators, many more, there is also plus, uh, equal, minus, equal, and uh, you will see them used. There, are, there is a limited set of data types. Basically, everything is a string by default. There are also integer numbers, there are no float numbers. Uh, eventually, uh, some uh, loops were added. Initially, uh, it was a problem because one has to make sure the loop ends. So verifying the loop was kind of problematic, but it's already done. It's maybe a safe function, but it works. You can, uh, that's important, uh, you can use not just uh, scalar variables, but you can use associative arrays, maps, and uh, square brackets is the way to index into the map. There are also tuples and stuff. So basically what I'm saying here, uh, yet another slide about the language elements, and then we have to dive into sample programs or write in your own programs, the, the best way to study programming language, actually. It's hard to read the manual for days and write code nothing. So variables, there are built-in variables. This is important. Uh, there are built-in variables for most common things you will need in your tracing or profiling programs. Process ID, thread ID, user ID, group ID for current process on which CPU we run, which uh, command executable file we are running, what is the return value from the function, what is the function name that you are currently probing, what is the full probe name, random numbers, uh, when we work in containers and try to limit things, which C group we uh, belong to, uh, we have some way to work with positional arguments of the traced functions. By default, sorry, they are not strings, but numbers, but they can be interpreted as strings. There are also some interesting built-ins related to times, uh, nanoseconds, time spans since the program started, elapsed. Uh, nanoseconds, sorry, it's a timestamp and elapsed uh, 
start to count from from zero. So there are variables. There are global variables that are available in different probes, starting with add. If you uh, would like to limit uh, a variable to a specific thread, you can use a map. And there are thread-specific uh, local variables uh, with uh, dollar prefix. Uh, there are associative arrays, and they can be multidimensional. For example, a uh, single-dimensional array for start time uh, indexed by thread ID, and we uh, assign current timestamp, and two-dimensional array memory. So uh, in this array, this uh, thread ID from this uh, stack got this return value. Uh, there are predefined variables that return associative arrays themselves. So k stack and u stack, they actually aliases for functions. And we can even deal with command line arguments in the same way as shell. So you can write programs that will be uh, that can be parameterized and can be applied to MySQLD and MariaDBD if you want, for example. So it's doable. We will see, maybe examples of most of this. So uh, I was lying to you, there is another slide uh, here for uh, functions. Uh, languages like C relies on a library of predefined functions. I cannot say it's a library, but typical functions are here, printf, C style, print, printing something, something converting to a string, zero terminated, uh, executing system command, uh, preliminary exit from the program, so it's completed, uh, getting stacks in various format, uh, getting size of, of different structures, comparing strings up to the nth element, and many more. So just read the reference. So maps or associative arrays. So this is the most universal type of, of storage. So it's a memory area that can be indexed. Uh, one, more, one important point about the BPF trace is uh, se several actually related to maps. First, uh, you do not declare anything, you just use it. By default, uh, maps are empty. If you define some index, you have the element. By, by default, this element is zero if interpreted as integer. So uh, at the end of the execution, if the map is not empty, it's printed. It's the default way the BPF trace works. You can rely on it to output the information you need, or you have to deal with it if you do not need these maps. Either they should be cleared, or you need to exit preliminary, do something. There are several map-related functions. Count is a basic one. Uh, there are some typical uh, aggregation functions. Uh, two kinds of histogram, uh, algorithmic and linear histogram. So what about histogram? Uh, the histogram uh, is uh, representing the range of uh, values that we see in the map in, in a different way. So we can uh, see how many uh, times the function, for example, was executed for one millisecond comparing to 10 milliseconds. So you can create a histogram of execution times of a function. If you need to delete specific key from the map, uh, there is a delete function. Uh, there is a print uh, function, it also applies to map. If you want to clear, delete all keys from the map, there is a clear function. And if you would like to set all the values in the map to zero, there is a zero function. There are more probably, I just never cared to find out. So the language is simple enough, but not so simple to just start writing programs. Uh, I suggest you to start with studying one-liners uh, that are not uh, MariaDB or MySQL specific, but uh, those specific to Linux kernel and useful for DBAs as well. So go here and check this tutorial uh, that uh, will give you some uh, insights on which trace points and, uh, are provided by the kernel. So some simple examples. I've already shown you BPF trace minus L, but you can apply some filter. So uh, in total, there were 69 thousand different probes, but you can uh, give a name. So basically a probe is named kind of probe, uh, then uh, if it's in the kernel, it's among syscalls, and this is a specific syscall. Uh, it's a template for the name. So with syscall name that starts from sysent. So you can trace file opening, as you know, system calls. Uh, you can trace specific uh, trace point. Uh, you need to check the source for the for this. You can count, for example, here is an interesting one-liner. So it uses 
that's one is also interesting. It uses printf format, uh, a command name, uh, converting uh, argument to zero terminated string for printing. Here we have a map, a map uh, with command as an index, and how many times this specific system call, uh, each specific system call was uh, executed by each program. So uh, how large are read uh, commands in this case, uh, uh, read requests from specific commands and the histogram is built. So you can literally uh, run that, that as well. So just copy paste it and see what happens. It's a great way to study the tool. Uh, in the tool set directory in the source of BPF tracer that you can get from GitHub, you can find a more elaborated, not one-liners, but more complex programs, which are very interesting. Uh, I had written a separate blog post about this. Uh, they are a great way to study how larger programs are coded in this language. Let's consider one of them as an example. Block IO snoop BT. So this is how BPF trace is usually executed. This way, you uh, run the, the version of BPF trace that is pointed out by your environment. This is a, the way to include something from the kernel sources. You definitely need this source um, to be on your system. Now we have comments. Now we have a begin probe. At the beginning, uh, one of the things you can do, you can either uh, print some instructions on how to use uh, the program, or you can print some header. So here we print some header for the information and format uh, define formatting for the information we provide later. Now, here we have a kernel probe for block account IO start and kernel probe for block account IO down. There are actually two kinds of ways uh, you can deal with kernel functions and many library functions. Either there is enter to the function and return, or there is one function that uh, is executed at the start and the function that is executed at the end. So here we have such a pair of functions. We see that different maps, four different maps are used. So arc0 is actually a command that was executed. So we store when the process started timestamp, which process by ID, which command it was. And we uh, get uh, the uh, information of uh, what uh, now we do it at the uh, enter to this call. So what disk IO, block disk IO call was executed. So this call has an argument. So, and for this argument, we store uh, specifically which uh, disk we uh, requested. So, when the I.O. is done, we check that we are actually matching this enter probe. For this, we are checking that uh, for this specific argument, uh, we have already stored something, something in our maps. And only in this case, we uh, compute time spent. And then we uh, put some information of, of how much time was spent on specific request, uh, when it was, which request it was, and things like that. Then uh, to uh, clean this information, we delete the key from the map. Now what we have at the end, at the end we clear everything so that the remainings from the last maybe incompleted system call are not printed upon exit. So it's the way to have a clean uh, BPF trace probe. Other option, what you can uh, do uh, differently at the end probe, in the end probe, sorry, you can uh, print some summary information. Specifically, you can print specific map in a way you like with print function. This is a quote from syscount, counting system calls per process. Also one of examples. So, coming back to our business of uh, SQL database, MariaDB specifically, Okay, we can trace system calls. We have a, a flexible way to replace S trace if we prefer. We have almost 70,000 trace points uh, in the kernel to work with. But coming back to MariaDB, what we can do? We can define a user probe. It's, uh, that's the very basic thing that I start with uh, while uh, dealing with every new dynamic tracing tool that I try to add to my toolbox. So specifically for this case, uh, what we're interested in is DBAs. We are probably interested in, in queries that are executed by the application. So one of the basic ideas I try to implement is to capture the query, uh, not on the wire, but somewhere in the code and maybe print the query and uh, ideally uh, measure how much time is spent executing this query. So the query, I know this from code review. It had not always been the case in all versions. It changes, but in recent versions, it's true that normal, simple, non-prepared statement uh, is executed inside dispatch command. So you will see it in every stack trace of every thread that is executing user query. So when you enter, it's uh, your start of executing the query. When you create from this function and return from it, 
uh, it's the end. So basically, if we would like to measure time of query execution, we can measure time or should measure time spent in dispatch command. This uh, command has uh, three arguments in recent MariaDB version. One of them is thread, very complex structure. We are interested in the third argument that is basically a packet. Uh, and usually for non-prepared statements, it does include a SQL code, uh, a SQL statement that is executed. So I end up, I ended up uh, on all the Fedora some time ago, maybe a year ago already, with such a uh, BPF trace uh, program, not a one-liner, uh, but it can be put into one line as well. So I am executing something quoted. There are two probe, user probe for the binary. So I defined the probe specific binary that I built from source and installed here. Here I've used a mangled name of dispatch command that I've got from, from I can get from different sources actually. I can get it from Perf, from Ftrace, from ObjDump. Uh, there are good news about it. Anyway, so I know the mangled name for dispatch command. Uh, now I use a map, a map called SQL. So I will store a SQL statement executed by a specific thread, and I get it as, as a zero terminated string from the third argument. Arguments start with arc zero, so it's arc two. And I have yet another map called start, so I uh, store the timestamp when this thread, by this thread ID. Each thread executes at most one query at a time, so far in MariaDB. So there is no parallel query execution at the moment. So this trick works. Upon return from this function, what am I doing? It's the same probe, but for the same function, mangled name, but return. I am checking that I am actually return from uh, the function that I managed to store the start of. So I am checking this is not zero. And then I am printing what SQL statement was executed by what threads and uh, try to convert timestamps into milliseconds. How the result looks like. It looks like this, basically. So unlike, uh, I do this trick with ftrace, I do this trick with perf, it can be done with other profilers, it can be done by many tools, uh, but uh, the way I can do it in BPF trace is very simple. I do not need to code anything. I, even with modern BPF trace, I do not need that mangled names. It's a historical thing, but if we can check what I did here, here I did the following. Let's try BPF trace, BPF trace. One button. Yes, so eventually I'll find what I'm looking for. Yes, so here I uh, have a command uh, where I use it applied to MariaDB 10.6 that I have up and running right now. And I used uh, not a mangled name, but a real name of a function. So what if I'll run it via sudo? My version is all newer than 0 0.11. So, and then what if I go to a different terminal like this and run some statements like and exit from the session. So what do we have here? I have the result of my BPF uh, trace command. Uh, so I see the following. First of all, upon connection, uh, there was a request for version command. Uh, I had not connected to any specific database, otherwise there would be some other commands. What I see is that that same thread ID, this one, uh, executed one plus one over zero um, milliseconds and executed uh, sleep three over three thousand milliseconds, three seconds exactly. So it was all run from the same thread. If I have a multi-thread load, I will get different outputs per different threads. The point of this demonstration was to show that in modern BPF trace, you can use demangled uh, names. So that's really the case. That's why, that's why I care to upgrade to recent Ubuntu and try to use recent distributions. So, uh, this is quite flexible, and I've shown you just a demo that uh, the tool evolves with time. I can capture the queries. I have a slow query log with a lot of details that can be printed if I want them uh, on the fly, whenever I need in production. And then I stop my BPF trace, and tracing stops. There is no impact when I'm not tracing at all. 
I do not need to write anything. I can collect, uh, summarize, and do everything. So uh, we can trace functions in the MariaDB server code. One of the ideas we discussed with one of the developers of uh, MariaDB was, uh, is there any way to use dynamic tracing tools as a way to check code coverage by some tests? So basically, which function, functions are executed when we run the test? We can try to use BPF trace this way, and I did it for this presentation, but there are surely problems. So when I did this lame attempt, try to trace every function and just print it, I found out hard way that there are uh, 34, almost 35,000 different functions, traceable functions in MariaDB. And I hit a limit, BPF trace max probes. I try to increase the limit on my uh, Ubuntu system, but I hit yet another problem. Yes, we ca you can get uh, the uh, the way to try to create all these probes, but you may hit uh, different problems of different kinds, eventually segmentation fault. You were warned about this, actually. It may lead even to a system crash. So what we can be sure about that by default on my Ubuntu, lame approach, just trace everything, does not work. Is it the end of the story? No, it isn't. Because, uh, first of all, we can try to be more selective. We can run not one uh, code coverage test, but multiple. And we are supposed that this uh, code coverage test covers specific functions, for example, some functions with do in their names, and check. So for do, we ended up with just about uh, 1,100 of different probes. It was doable because I changed the environment variable, but we hit yet another problem that I had not debugged uh, yet. So it still doesn't work. But if we uh, try to be even more picky and uh, try to trace a different uh, set of functions, it's doable. For example, it's easy to set 70 probes for uh, various functions with command in the world, uh, in, in the function name, and it works. Moreover, I will show you yet another example here. So we have a bit extended idea here for the BPF trace uh, and probes which is, sorry, again, I'm typing something wrong. Let me find it. Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, I will have to change it because it was some lame attempt, attempt to do something. So we can just uh, try this. Mm, uh, assuming from the experiment that I have not more than 1,000 uh, different probes for function names starting with HA, its handler interface, I can try to count how many times the function is executed. Here is plus equal statement. So let's try to do it, and we probably hit some problem, but we will, we will be able to resolve it. So as soon as we run this, or well, maybe not. In this environment, probably uh, the problem we may hit, uh, oh, yes, there is a limit. OK, too many open files. Yes, I was looking for something like that. So we do not do unsafe things. We hit some, some problems. Uh, too many open files. OK, what we have here with the number of open files. Uh, too small. What if we do this? Limit minus n, for example, 10,000, and then try to repeat. Oh, it kind of works, and we can put some load here. For the load, I will try to, sorry, to run some sysbench, or to period write test, for example. I let it work for, for a few dozens of seconds. It's not a big deal what it does or what it shows. Uh, yeah, the performance impact is not huge, so it does matter. I, I know that from experience. But uh, if we eventually sorry, go here and stop execution, eventually, maybe not immediately, we will get some useful output. So let's continue. Uh, thing is, there are lim limits, but we can deal with them. You can hit problems. You have to deal with them. Uh, you cannot trace every function uh, of MariaDB server. It's too complex program. But you can uh, trace something like a thousand of functions. Let's see. Let me just see what was collected in this file, how maps are printed, and what is inside. It's interesting, by the way. So what we can see here is is the following. So we see here, yeah, let me scroll. So in total, there were uh, a bit less than 1,000 probes. I knew it. And the map is printed in increasing, uh, sorted by the 
by increasing uh, value of the key. So we can see how many heap engine uh, calls we had, and we see that eventually the highest number of calls was for multiple range read and uh, next case can uh, call in in ODB. So that's already cool and it worked. And the performance impact, just trust me or check yourself, is not that huge. And we will see the result a bit later on one of the slides for a different test, but still. What else we can do? As I told from the very beginning, the developers of MariaDB are actually interested uh, in many cases. They're interested in stack traces. So what was cool that there are a way to get a stack trace uh, in a probe. And here is a poor man's profiler uh, based on BPF trace. There is a profile probe. You can say how many times per second it's Hertz argument. Uh, this, in this case, 99 times per second. We would like to do something. We sample the stack traces of MariaDB process only. We can sample everything, by the way. And we are printing stack trace uh, in the format that is similar to perf. By default, uh, BPF trace has a bit different format. And we put it into a new stack. And this way, we can get stack traces. I have a blog post showing uh, how uh, well, if you have a stack trace, you can do many things with it. If you have aggregated stack traces, as, as in uh, this my blog post, you can create flame graph and do many other things. Thing is, you stack just provide a way to capture this stack uh, in many places, but for example, at specific rate as a sampling profile. That's already cool. So, speaking about the performance impact, uh, depending on what you trace, it can be notable. Here you can see somewhat similar uh, sysbench uh, test running, and you can see that eventually we have a two times like drop in uh, queries per second. Why is it so? Because uh, in this case, uh, the case is from a real life uh, set of not even debugging, but studying sessions uh, with one of the MariaDB developers uh, who studied weights. And he invented, uh, suggested different way to trace and represent weights. So one of his initial suggestions was to trace pthread mutex log calls and see uh, where they come from. So for this, uh, where there is a request, I have an immediate uh, solution. I just checked uh, where our threads come from. It's a library, and I've put a user probe for the library, for the mutex lock, but I fired it only if it was coming from MariaDBD. And I counted, uh, so I needed to find the most popular uh, stacks that end up with the thread mutex lock for, for a flame graph. So the performance impact of this tracing was already notable, two times decrease in uh, queries per second and transactions per second. Why? Because the thread mutex lock is often called. So even with BPF trace, the uh, number of probes matter and how frequent, uh, frequently the probe is uh, fired also matters. So it cannot be uh, just trace everything and be happy and get the results without impact. No, the impact is always something to care about. After we studied the result, uh, the developer got the idea that uh, mutex lock call is not something to trace, actually, because calling mutex and waiting on mutex are different things. So then we tried to trace LLL low-level lock weight with BPF trace uh, in that same library. Uh, so we ended up with a bit more elaborated program that I uh, tried to run for predefined uh, number of seconds. In the first argument of the program, how long it runs, like 10 seconds, 60 seconds, whatever. It's not the first attempt, and there is a whole story in several blog posts behind it. So basically, what we are doing, we are doing more or less the same, uh, but we are storing so-called futex stacks, and we are not storing in them forever, because they, there may be a lot of them different, and it's slow, but we are printing them immediately. So we are doing a kind of opposite thing to what is typically suggested for BPF trace. We are not summarizing the information in kernel context. No, we are outputting it for summarization later. But this way, the performance impact is smaller. So we collect stacks uh, that lead to uh, a low-level lock weight, and uh, we count how many times this stack was noted over the runtime past the first parameter. They are summarized externally, and the, uh, we found out it's great for performance, actually. And uh, some specific uh, problem was resolved. We found the host point of contention in that case, all with dynamic tracing based on BPF trace. Well, maybe in reality it was based on, based on perf events, but it's doable with BPF trace as well. 
So what else? Uh, it's tempting to trace everything with BPF trace because whenever you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So you try to nail it down. And uh, well, recently and even today I had to deal with uh, problems that look like memory leaks. So it was interesting to check if BPF trace may help us to trace memory allocations, and it can. There is another library that implements malloc, so we can trace malloc calls. It's a one-liner that shows that we can really get a probe fired for every allocation, which thread allocated how many bytes. <clears throat> One can elaborate uh, based on this idea uh, and try to save, uh, for example, stack traces that caused uh, this memory allocation. And this sample program worked, but it started to output uh, the map, uh, which is collected, printing stacks. Uh, like five minutes after we stopped collection. And the performance impact on sysbench load was so high that I call this a template. Uh, I found out that actually the most of the time is spent on resolving stack traces. So BPF trace, when we use uStack, it tries to resolve stack from addresses to function names. Not only it's a bit less flexible than perf uh, in this regard, so it cannot resolve everything perf can. Uh, the time spent is notable. And it's a huge performance impact. So what I'm looking for right now is a way to get uh, maybe not resolved stack traces. Uh, and if I cannot get it from BPF trace, I have to use other tools. And I did use other tools, uh, BCC tools, and it's one of the cases when all the BCC tools are still needed because of efficiency. Speaking about the efficiency, a uh, long time ago, several years ago, when I started to use BPF trace for real, uh, I made this experiment. I compared poor man's profiling based on GDB once per second with perf profiling with BPF trace based profiling 99 times per second. So I've collected stacks and counted stacks this way. Uh, the details are represented in a separate blog post. It was tested on a different box and on all the Fedora. Thing is, uh, absolute numbers do not matter. Uh, GDB-based PTPMP tracing had a notable impact, like twice uh, the decrease of queries per second. Perf has smaller impact, like 2%, and uh, BPF trace is even less, less than 1%. And here comes the power of aggregation at the cost of CPU use, but still uh, aggregation inside the kernel context. So I was counted and collecting information in the map, and I've outputted only counted information that is much smaller in size than raw perf data. And that fact uh, in that specific system mattered a lot. So a lot of time was spent on writing to disk. And here I write twice as uh, few data, so it comes with less impact. It may be the case for many test loads and for many tests as well. So BPF trace is a more lightweight profiler than perf itself in some cases. So is BPF trace a universal answer to any uh, profiling needs? Uh, it's something to try. There are problems. Problems that are not yet resolved uh, and are essential is that you need root access. You you will already seen from, from, from my lame test that as soon as I forgot about sudo, it does not work. But it's true for perf as well. So we need to care about performance impact. So it's uh, uh, detailed in several items here. We should uh, do aggregation in kernel context if possible. We should output only histograms. We should not share a lot of information back to the user space unless uh, processing in kernel is a problem by itself, as we had with uh, our attempt to trace memory allocations, for example. So there is some technical problem like how to uh, add probe to some line inside the function. It's doable same way as in perf, basically. I had no big need to do it, so there is no blog post yet, but it's doable. Uh, mangled names, class members, and everything is uh, largely a resolved problem by now, but you may need access to headers, or you may have to define structures of the arguments you work with. So in case of uh, MariaDB, uh, it would be a huge problem to deal with thread internals, for example, if I need them, because it's a very complex structure, so I need its definition somehow, or uh, I have to play some tricks. Uh, I need new Linux. Uh, these days, Linux kernel 5 are quite common already, so uh, the time for BPF trace has come. The binaries, if we speak about user probes, probes had to be built with a uh, no omit frame pointer, otherwise we will not be able to resolve addresses. In case of MariaDB, uh, this symbolic information, if we speak about packages provided by MariaDB Corporation or 
foundation it's separately provided so it has to be installed uh it's still the case that bpf trace is so dynamic that ideally you have to build it from source but previous my version uh stayed for like half a year it's just still more new that what ubuntu provides in package so it's a minor problem and major problem problem for me is that so far uh while i use bpf trace to work for our developers to help them to show them the impact uh, and do the trace and they like i had no chance yet to apply bpf trace for real support issues perf is applied f trace was applied bcc tools are in the process of applying right now i have a huge hope but bpf trace is a bit too new so i had no chance to use it so the main problem is getting a practical experience with it so uh still it was already used i made a quick check as a person who comes from bug verification team and is like a bit bugs oriented in everything mysql and mariadb when i try to find out if bpf trace is used i just curious bug curious bugs databases and i rechecked this information initially obtained a few months ago for my previous related talk it's still the same so we have at least four different bug reports where mariadb developers uh foundation developer uh great guy daniel black and one of our inner db developers eugene Koso, used bpf trace to prove something or make some point or build flame graph and everything there are great uh, one-liners or simple examples of bpf trace used to prove the point uh, on what happens in the kernel and everything so in mariadb bpf trace is already used internally it's not the case in oracle mysql it's not the case in perform in percona unfortunately so I would like these guys to also use BPF trace uh, more openly, at least, and write about it. I suggest BPF trace as a tool for MariaDB DBAs and not only developers, because you can trace everything. You can check your uh, idea. Uh, is that function in the code executed? What was the statement executed? You can capture everything as soon as you know the code. And I'm the only one, and basically I see no good reason for an open source database management system like MariaDB. Not to uh, use uh, dynamic tracing tools and of them BPF trace is the easiest. This is true uh, at least unless every other line of the code uh, is instrumented by performance schema, uh, it's hardly going to happen for MariaDB at all. And this is not yet the case for MySQL as well. So BPF trace is easy, BPF trace is cool, BPF trace is kind of a future. Uh, the last but not the least, uh, when you find something that looks like a bug for you in MariaDB, report a bug to MariaDB. If you found some problems with uh, BPF trace, check known issues. It was the case for me just for last attempt to build it. I always forget to recursively update models, but there is an issue for that. So bugs databases are great sources of knowledge, and I ask you to please use them. Thank you for your attention. Use BPF Trace, use MariaDB. Cheers. All right, Valerie, thank you very much for the talk. This was very in-depth and you covered a lot of topics. So I'm uh, very excited about hearing of, of, about all of it. Uh, so the, the first thing that comes to mind is you mentioned that uh, uh, neither Percona nor um, uh, Oracle MySQL make use of BPF trace. Um, do you do you know why this this is, or um, do you have any ideas of how we could convince them to start using it more for the uh, best of the ecosystem as a whole? Yes, I can try to imagine. First of all, uh, uh, Oracle MySQL is obsessed with and promoting performance schema. So they are implementing it and they are working on it for a reason. So when they identify uh, some known problem, they try to instrument the code for that. So in their case, it's clear. Percona should be more, uh, you know, uh, solution oriented. So they should not wait. And I believe they uh, actually use it based on uh, things people from Percona are talking about. I had not found the evidence in the bug reports, unlike with MariaDB. So uh, maybe internally uh, they have so great test cases coming to the uh, table for the developers, repeatable test cases that, that they just do not need uh, lightweight tracing in production. They already have the result of somebody else did that for them. So uh, then probably developers uh, do not have much need for, for BBF trace for uh, their uh, job. Uh, another reason is still uh, the tool is new enough 
to use it uh, in a full capacity, you need Linux kernel 5. While the majority of production is probably still not there, just switching towards recent uh, versions of, of Debian, Ubuntu, and Red Hat, whatever. So, uh, and uh, the lack of information as well. Uh, and yet another reason probably is uh, that, you know, to, to use BPF trace, you need to know the source code. So unlike performance schema, it's not an official API. It may change with minor versions, function names may change. Nobody guarantees that uh, some functions stay for, for decades, but others may be introduced and there is no uh, official API. Uh, it used to be there in the form of D-trace probes, what I call USDT, user-defined static probes, but they were removed from MySQL 8 entirely. In MariaDB, they are, uh, at least can be enabled if one needs them. Uh, but it's not the case already in MySQL land. So they either have to rethink this, or maybe uh, eventually they will have a stable enough uh, set of functions so that everybody in, in community will know where things happen. It's like a pluggable uh, storage engine API, for example. It's stable enough. Mm -hmm. uh, what about the internals? They are changed a lot. So this is also, theoretically, it's an obstacle for, for anything, any tool that does dynamic tracing. So that would be an obstacle for wide acceptance of the approach, no matter which tool is used, uh, but for BPF trace as well, long term. So we have but to work your, on it. Um... And we should explain how, how it's useful. We should show examples. I myself has probably have probably to rewrite a dozen of my blog posts that were based on GDB in the past, so that I show how to use BPF trace in production in non-debug binaries without stopping things from happening to still get the insights of how MySQL works. So it's like a set of tasks for, for all of us. From your experience, what were the hotspots that you tend to always investigate in the server? Well, in, in many I cases, uh, everything about weights, where the time is, most of the time is spent that we do not expect. We expect some things to work slow if we read from disk, okay. But what happens in concurrent environment? Why we are waiting? Why we have a normal performance and suddenly things go bad? So why? It can be one slow query and usually that's the case, for example, with InnoDB that uh, makes uh, history list length longer and slow things down just everything. In some cases, this is obvious. There are cases which are less obvious. So then we need profiling and even sampling based profiling may not be good enough. So then we need tracing. And then there is a problem how to get a reproducible uh, test case based on limited time we can really spend tracing in production. So that's a huge problem and huge problem for me as a support engineer, because you know developers would prefer to get a repeatable test case, a clear understanding where things are coming from, what they are waiting on, and studying that for you, if it's not repeatable, is not something they can and should do efficiently. They should better spend their time elsewhere on a problem that are easy to reproduce, can be presented with a test case, or that will be included into regression test case unit and everything. So without this, it's a huge and complex task. So that's what, what I have to study. Uh, there are surely simple cases. So BPF trace specifically can be a good replacement for S trace we all use just to understand what, what specific thing we may be waiting for at startup. Mm -hmm. So these are yeah. simple tasks. Just more lightweight, another thing is just uh, whole system profiling, like why everything is slow, how to prove that it's not MariaDB specifically, but maybe lack of total system memory or some load coming from elsewhere, some uh, bad device, for example. You have to, to show this with specific... Yeah, I, uh, I understand. And, and it can be uh, easily done with BPF trace as well, because it just has, has the sampling profiler like embedded there among other things, and it can be enabled conditionally and very specifically. You can do it for specific thread if you're interested. 
you can see where the whole system spends time or where the specific thread is spending. Yeah, I, I found it quite interesting that you can uh, trace a dynamic library without actually starting the Yeah, uh, well, you program. do not run it in any specific environment, like to trace uh, memory allocations, you do not need to, to have it instrumented for everything, for every problem. You mm -hmm. should not start your MySQL D or MariaDB D process in specific environment. You just may have it running and still you can find out where things come from. That's very convenient and probably very unusual, you know, because for developers with a with, uh, uh, quite well understood pro problem, they just have everything in their debug binaries with all the instruments with GDB. They can get uh, all that GDB attached when needed to their test case and just see the problem. The real uh, hard part is to isolate it to this stage. And this is where the tools may help. It's not the only way. Dynamic tracing is not the only way. There are other ways, but it, uh, it's targeted to solve a very specific subset of hard to reproduce production problems. And that's why it's attractive for me. Yeah, it feels like developers should actually learn to use this tool more, not just yes, support yes. engineers. It should come, for, for, for me, it's clear that it should come from developers who do not have the problem with knowing which function to compose this or that part of the server. They have all the proper expectations that they know what to trace. They know what to suspect. They just need some way to get the evidence to, to test their theory quickly and to get a hard proof that really something is called or not called or never called or called less often or more often than expected and get the stack trace whenever they need. So yep. like, like, like they can do in GDB, but without all the overhead of running the system under GDB, which uh, means different timing for threads and in multi-threaded environment, totally different sequence of events. Yep, and, th and then it gets very hard to reproduce the yes. exact problem. Exactly. Yeah. So if somebody can reproduce something easily in production, then dynamic tracing is the tool you need because you can just insert your probe, insert your recording to the very specific place you suspect and see if it happens or not. It's not even sampling, it's just tracing exactly where it's needed and when it's needed. And then you can disable it and let people work without restarts, without on all, the, all the performance impact negative one that may happen. Even if, if you just attach GDB once and spend too much time there, everything is stopped at this point. Yeah, yeah, and that's... Uh... Well, I, I think it's actually the best more uh, than one. So you should be very specific. You need to know what you are doing. If you suggest GDB, and uh, well, uh, I am very uh, not excited, but uh, positive that BPF trace and dynamic tracing will work, just because we already have customers who who really attach GDB to live servers and execute comments we suggest to them. So it's mm -hmm. not like. A, something not acceptable now at this stage. It took maybe five years to, to, to get there, but many are already there and it will be a relief for them, a lightweight tool that allows to get the same and more actually. So well, as soon as Linux kernel 5 will become a, a typical environment, I hope it will be in this next year really soon. Uh, I expect a huge progress with everything related to dynamic tracing, and specifically BCC tools and BPF trace as the quickest way uh, to do something that is not covered by generic and already written tools, which are not MariaDB specific. I think that's a, a very good uh, uh, thing to look forward to. And I think it's the, one of the key takeaways here that uh, BPF trace is effectively a uh, like an oscilloscope for your uh, kernel. Yeah, you basically. just yeah you just attach live and you change nothing in your schema, but you can still observe some things happen. You change almost nothing, not not, not yeah. really. You still have another secure, uh, but you know its impact. You can measure it and you know the impedance and whatever. Uh, 
details of your oscilloscope in general, so you can understand the impact of your observation to the entire system. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much, Valerie, for all this information. I'm really looking forward to hearing more about BPF Trace in the future. Hopefully, we get it used by uh, both support engineers and developers. And thank you very much for spreading your knowledge to all of us. Yeah, I should do it more often and better. But yeah, thank you for attention to this topic, which is like not very obvious for, for the community in general. Why should we discuss some Linux specific tool, not database related at all, just because it's, it's what suggested by some guys. So the more uh, people will hear about that, uh, the more uh, they try to use it, the better I think we will understand the limitations as well, which also present. It's not an absolutely answer, absolute answer to every question. No, it's not the only tool that will be ever needed by the DBA in the long run. No, it's a bit more complex than that, but it's a really powerful and useful tool. Yeah, I, I agree. Thank you very much, Valery. And uh, let's uh, keep inter interacting with the audience on Zulip channel. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your efforts to organize this event. Bye. Bye.